Hi there, good morning. We're here on uh, early on Monday, the uh, 22nd of March, and we're just into spring. And it, my name is Jared Green. I'm one of the lead uh, clinicians, one of the lead physios in the uh, physio clinic in Barefoot in Harborn in Birmingham. And it gives me great pleasure to uh, speak to my good friend and all round inspirational person, specialist, pregnancy, pelvic health, um, postnatal physiotherapist, Maria Elliott. So Maria and I have known each other for many years. Maria is a, a very good friend of mine, um, always incredibly supportive. And Maria is uh, based down in London. So she's got a clinic in Chiswick and she's got a clinic in central London in Harley Street. And Maria is seen as really a leading pregnancy, postnatal pelvic health physio. And what Maria also did, I think it was back in 2015, devised the Mummy MOT program. And we do lots of Mummy MOTs in the, in the clinic in Birmingham because we have five people who Maria has trained. Um, and now lots of people know what the Mummy MOT is. And Maria, big thanks for giving up your time. And maybe my first question to you is... Uh, and I'm sure I'm not I'm sure I'm not the first person to ask you this, Maria, maybe even this morning. Uh, what's the mummy MOT? Um, so the mummy MOT is a check for mums after they've had their baby. Um, you know, here in the UK, because often in America, sometimes Holly Herman and crew would say, what's that mummy mot? But here in the UK, you know, we uh, get our car checked and we get all the different parts and what's working, what's not working. So. The idea was, you know, we know that when mums have a baby, that afterwards everything just doesn't sort itself out really quickly for everybody. And there are postnatal conditions that continue and continue to make life difficult for mums. So we set up the Mummy MOT to provide a comprehensive screening for mums. So it's not just a pelvic floor check. And um, it's also to check, you know, how mums move, how they breathe. We look at their um, tummy and we check everything about that mum. With a mummy MOT, what we do is we take a really detailed history of um, the pregnancy, the delivery, and um, any complications that they've had now. And then they come to clinic and we check, as I said, yeah, posture, tummy, pelvic floor, and also work out what it is that they are keen to return to, like what activity, do they want to go back to running, tennis, skiing, um, et cetera. And we got to bring that information into the, the screen. We also check a good history of any bladder, bowel, sexual issues that they may have had even before the pregnancy. Yeah. Um, and uh, what do they have now? And ideally this Mummy MOT check and screen is done six to eight weeks after you've had a baby. Um, and then it also, depending on what we find, then we recommend what types of exercises to do and a, you know, a bespoke rehab program. And Brilliant. some moms have more concerns about their pelvic floor. So that needs a little bit more attention. And some people have more concerns about their uh, abdomen and their breath. And so we have to look at it all. And, then... and it's a great, it's also a great way, I think, for, for moms really to prioritize themselves. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and I suppose I trained in France or, you know, I was over there from 92 to 97 and that's where I trained in women's health. And over there, moms automatically, you know, it was routine to go and have your pelvic floor checked. And so they did 10, 12 sessions of re-education perennial. I'm showing off my French now. Oh, I may have to get out my leave and start books there, Maria. Yeah, fairly. And, you know, that was all paid for by the state. And you could do it either in a private practice like ours, or you could do it in your local NHS hospital. So it just seemed like normal to me that mums should be checked. So I suppose that's why it was set up. And I got chatting and got creative with Jenny Burrell, who you know. And what we did was combine the training of postnatal physiotherapists and um, the training of postnatal fit pros to have um, integrated functional programs for the mums. And then we started training the physios and now the physios can deliver that service throughout the UK. Brilliant. And you've probably sort of touched on the answer to my next question. So I know, and anyone who knows you, Maria, knows that you are really super passionate 
about trying to help as many mums as you can. It's what really, it's, it's one of the things that really drives you. Yeah. And so where does that really uh, in-depth passion come from? That's a good question, isn't it? Um, so is it from what you saw in France or is it from something else? Um, yeah, I suppose in France, um, yeah, because it was routine, um, it just seemed like the norm. I suppose I hate to see people have um, conditions that can be treated. And, um, you know, we all know that postnatally, um, mums can leak, will have pain, have a tummy gap, but nobody seemed to be doing anything about it. And um, the idea here was to train lots of physiotherapists. So, you know, we've trained over 350 so that they could then, um, you know, see the mums and help the mums throughout the UK. And I suppose that's what's developed initially. It was a training course, but then we needed the mums to know that the physios were there, otherwise they can't get help. So good point. We put a lot of energy and um, time into social media and our Instagram so that we can help moms. I've always been somebody who liked helping lots of people, you know, and, you know, we both work in the area of pelvic pain, don't we? And, yep. you know, you just have to go the extra mile. And I suppose here with Mommy MAT and the services that we're delivering, I feel we're going the extra mile because we're doing a bit more of advanced screening. And then also we're, we're looking at the different ways that we can look after the mums, depending and on- it's, And it's rewarding work. Oh, it's fascinating. And, you know, I suppose I love learning. So I love learning from other physios. And I think, you know, all of us together, working together then can help the mums. And, um, you know, obviously with the last year in COVID, there's been an awful lot more restrictions in place. So it's been even harder. And we're getting more and more inquiries whether that's by email or telephone. So we've had to build more resources. So I suppose it feels good as well when you help people, doesn't it? You know, it's- oh, yeah, well, uh, yeah. I, I think we both, I think, I think most physios share that uh, desire or to, to help people to, to and, and as you said, to go that extra mile. Uh, mm -hmm. And then we've also asked, uh, we, have, we have brilliant patients who come to the clinic and we have brilliant people that we look after. And we've had a few questions from some of them. Uh, from because we put this out on social media. So uh, first question for you, Maria, which I'm sure you've been asked many a time. Uh, how do mums check to see if they have a tummy gap or if they have uh, what we would call a diastasis? diastasis? What's the best way for mums to check themselves? Yeah. So mums can check themselves postnatally if they, you know, um, feel that they have. So they can lie on their tummy. They can bend their knees up and they can place two fingers and just check the tension, say from, you know, from the, um, the rib cage all the way down to the pubic bone. And then they want to check tension and do they feel resistance. And then they want to check at three points, again, between the ribs and the pubic bone here. Again, can they then turn their fingers and is there the capacity to put one or two or three fingers in at three different points um, along that midline. There are also factors, you know, they can also stand up and look in the mirror, then they can um, do squats and look at what happens from a functional point of view. With, you know, we know that the research would say one in three mums will have more than a two finger gap after 12 weeks. Um, so then we have to work out why is that there? So it's good for mums to check themselves, not like, um, you know, every day or obsessive. Yeah, yeah, not good. But I think we um, we do need to um, educate mums when they're pregnant about the tummy gap, uh, because in the past, when we've seen mums with a significant five finger, eight finger gap, you know, they're upset um, and angry that nobody told them about the gap. It's all about the pelvic floor. And um, so it's good for mums to, to check that themselves. They could check it just gently at two weeks and then again at four and six weeks. And, you know, by eight weeks, some moms have just, you know, the muscles and the tension and the, um, has, you know, has come back to a relatively normal resting place. And for others, then um, there is uh, more of a, a significant gap. And that's when we need to uh, devise programs for them and check 
again, get the mums in and see what movements facilitate that improving the, the strength and the tension in that midline. Um, and I suppose sometimes we, we will see uh, mums in the clinic who maybe think they have a gap, but when we measure them, they don't, which is good news. Yeah. But they're sometimes just really weak abdominally. Would, would you also see lots of that, Maria? Yeah, exactly. And um, so we would check the abdominal strength of all the different muscles. We check how they're breathing. We check functional movements and what happens to the different layers of the abdomen. And we know that in the tummy, there's like the transverse abdominus, there's the crisscross, the obliques and your six pack muscle. So we look at each different layer of muscle and again, yeah, record their strength. Um, and then again, looking as well at the integrity of the skin and the fascia yeah. and at how they breathe. Um, so those, you know, the breathing, the central tension, the gap plus then the the muscle testing yeah so it's really looking at uh at, at really looking at all of that abdomen rather than just the gap exactly and even around the back if it's really tight you know out in the back and then that doesn't release it's hard for the muscles at the front to come centrally so yeah um it's and it's a really important um aspect of the mummy mot checking the abdomen and I think, you know, for every mum that has twins, you know, we should be checking that gap and we should be giving them education nice and early. And, and some people need support um, early postnatally and then others don't. And it's possible for us to, to screen. And there's lots of great resources out there now as well, isn't there? The work of Gwanya Donnelly and um, your friend in Canada. I can't pronounce her name. Munri. Uh, Munera. Thank you. Yeah, it's always it's but it's always a it's always a it's always difficult if you start to mention someone because you always leave someone else out. But yeah, there are wonderful people out there. There are wonderful people out there. It's hard to list them all. Now, uh, you've sort of touched on this. So having a baby or maybe having a baby and already having a toddler or two, it's a very physical job. So looking after a baby is very physical work. We, you know, lots of stuff is done in a very flexed position and it's and it's maybe quite heavy work kind of holding the baby in a sling or bathing or putting the buggy in and out of the car or picking them up at night to feed them. So lots of uh, mums get maybe postnatal back pain mm. or postnatal mid back pain. And these are also women who we should see in the mummy MOT. Is that right, Maria? Yeah, definitely. We would check all those symptoms. So with the mummy MOT, you know, we check, have you got pain anywhere? That could be rib pain, back pain, carpal tunnel pain. Um, but yeah, with the back, um, then I'm a big believer. I suppose I'm very Pilates trained. So, you know, from that six weeks to 12 weeks, generally I would, um, you know, recommend the core restore exercises. So it's back to those basics, isn't it? That the tilts, the bridges on all fours. So regaining that strength and stability. Um, centrally so to um, relieve back pain and also doing it I do a fair amount of manual therapy as you know um, so yeah we would check back and hips hips are often either, they're either too stiff or they're too um, mobile so it's like integrating um, the all of the normal MSK physio that we would do is part of it as well and part of our prescriptive program for when they go home and then getting you know as you say the mums are very busy and they are tired isn't it it's trying to work out for them what's the best time of the day for them to do their exercises for their back and their hips and you know often it's like small uh, five seven minute sessions three four times a day um, yeah. and and i suppose it's being realistic and not feeling guilty about not being able to do too much of the exercise because i suppose it's been realistic as what they can fit in exactly yeah yeah and then lots of lots of mums will have they may have been told to do pelvic floor exercises or maybe in hospital they'll have been given a sheet of exercises, which is never ideal, or they may have. Um, someone may have told them or they may have seen it online, and I know when we get our mums in we use lots of the tummy ultrasound to see, are they doing the exercises correctly or what ones they should be doing we decide. Uh, what do you get? What what exercise? Maybe what are what are some good pelvic floor exercises, Maria? Um, I think is again, isn't it? 
it's really important to come in and get your pelvic floor checked correctly, exactly. whether it's by a mommy MOT or a pelvic health physio, because again, often um, moms are trying to tighten their pelvic floor, they're trying to release it. And if they're trying really hard like that, it indicates that there is some kind of recruitment problem, isn't there? So again, we would recommend everybody is checked for their pelvic health. And so in clinic, what we do do is we don't go straight to the pelvic floor. Um, we are looking at how, again, how they're moving functionally, how they're breathing. You know, we've got a biofeedback, the pelvic power biofeedback that you can sit on in your yep. gym gear and you can contract and relax and we can see visually um, on the- And that's the nice as well, because that's then non-invasive. Exactly, yeah. Um, and so then we move towards the bed and then we check the, the tummy, we check the movement, we check the back, we check the hips. And then when we get to the pelvic floor, first of all, and you know, I really chat through the, with the mom here. It's not all about the squeezes and the holds. It's about function and about her symptoms. So we do check um, externally what we can see and, you know, ask the mom to do a pelvic floor lift and to do a pelvic floor release. And we are looking at what kind of movement is there. Is there a normal range? Is there, or is it really, sometimes there's not much movement and we think, oh, maybe the pelvic floor is really tight and short, which it can be sometimes, especially if there's a history of pelvic pain um, or it may be weak because of a, an instrumental delivery. So every mom is, is different. So as I said, we would observe, we would palpate externally and just check how the muscles are and check how they feel. We check how the episiotomy or the scars are because if they're all really sensitive then it's going to be hard for the mum to do her pelvic floor exercises so say you know saying to mums just do your pelvic floor exercises it isn't enough often we need to check it ourselves and then we need to we can still see and get a lot of information as you say externally through ultrasound imaging through biofeedback visual devices and by even looking and um, palpating externally. And then the, the full assessment then would be to do the internal as well and to check you know, the, the pelvic floor muscles at the entrance because there's different layers, isn't there? And there's different functions. So I feel the pelvic floor is very <laughs> complicated. Um, and I think you're also, uh, you are also a pelvic pain expert. Yeah. It is safe to say you are a pelvic pain expert in both men and women. Yeah. And I suppose not a lot of people maybe in the public know that the pelvic floor can also get overactive. Mm. It can become painful. It can become tight and shortened. And for those women, postnatally doing pelvic floor exercises can make things worse it works a yeah. lot worse yeah so i think that's why it's really important for us as clinicians to you know have really good conversations with the mums even before we check the pelvic floor and you know we know that the signs if the pelvic floor is very short and tight are guarding they may have pain when they empty their bladder when they empty their bowel pain with intercourse um, you know, the, the pelvic floor just doesn't relax to allow good flow. So there's certain screening uh, questions that we do from a pelvic floor dysfunction point of view, isn't there? Um, and that, yeah, that yeah. leads on nicely to our next question that, that someone has sent us uh, in that postnatally returning to intimacy, either self-intimacy or intimacy with a partner can be kind of can be quite anxious yeah. in that will it be comfortable will it be painful will it be similar to to before will it be enjoyable so any tips there maria yeah um again i would just say um listen to your body and there's no one rule like you know you're safe to go from eight weeks or 12 weeks or 20 weeks everybody's body is different and um, you don't want it to be painful you want to be um Kind of ready and prepared and often you know postnatally because of breastfeeding as well there's um you know from a lubrication point of view so the vaginal mucosa can be sensitive and the uh stitches or where there was any perineal repair can be so i often say wait 12 weeks anyway but um and then you know once moms resume intimacy and um if there is pain, you know, the first time, the second time, well, then to get advice and to get treatment. Some of the advice and treatment we would give 
would be making sure um, massaging externally, using a nice oil-based lubricant to massage the um, stitches, to massage the pelvic floor externally, to use a good water-based internally, and then um, to sometimes, you know, people have to change positions sometimes. Um, sometimes people are just, you know, it depends again, isn't it, on also energy and mood and whether you've had sleep. Um, however, I am a big believer that it's really important for relationships as well, for mums and dads. And so we have, I work with Dr. Anna Palikeros in London as well. So we're always, you know, um, keen to discuss all different options. And sometimes, um, you know, and I do see a lot of pelvic pain postnatal. Yeah, so yeah. we have to use vibrators, dilators, massage and different um, strategies so that the pelvic floor um, can relax. And the goal is, isn't it, is to return to intimacy without pain um, for, for everybody. And, um, and pain and intimacy is, is, is a, quite a, an, another big area within female pelvic pain physiotherapy. Yeah. And I, I, you know, I often say there's no rush, but then actually it's funny because when I was in France, we used to be encouraged to get back to intimacy quite quickly. So it was kind of part of the, the assessment and part of what we encouraged. And then I came to the UK and we be waiting nine months, 12 months, you know, to check whether, it, you know, everything's all right. So um, I'm, you know, I, I like talking about return to intimacy and um, it's very important from a pelvic health point of view. Very good for the pelvic floor muscles as well, isn't it? And um, as we said, yeah, for, for relationships as well, because then sometimes for the dads, they don't know what's going on, don't they? They're kind of confused themselves as well, um, where their role is. Uh, so true, lots, of, true. lots of talking, lots of good lubrication, lots of massage, lots of breathing and lots of chat. Mm. And leading on from that, another question is, uh, Mums sometimes feel uh, that some of them can feel under pressure to get back to exercise really early. Mm -hmm. um, and I know we don't rot, we don't, we definitely don't push them back. But uh, so when, so say if a mum's at home and they want to get back to doing uh, maybe Zumba or they want to get back running or they want to get back to their exercise group because the ex outdoor exercise is starting up very soon. Uh, how do they know when they're ready? Yeah. Or, or how can they find out when they're ready? Yeah. yeah. Again, they all need to be doing some kind of postnatal exercises, you know, regaining core strength, getting the breath right, getting the pelvic floor and getting the balance. There's, lot, there's different screens that we use as well. You know, we need to be able to, to squat and jump, stand on one leg. There's screens that we do within the Mummy MOT. We do them at eight weeks, 12 weeks, 18 weeks and 24 weeks. So depending on what it is that the mums want to get back to. And then it's about giving them advice, you know, again, isn't it? Obviously you have to walk and walk fast and jog before you run. And um, depending on, you know, the different um, activity that they want to go back to, you know, initially we want to regain control in all our planes before we add in load and before we add in um, resistance. So I suppose we've developed videos so that there's that progression from lying where you're just doing your basic um, tilts and bridges to jumping, to lifting, to adding load. So we would recommend a, a gradual progressive um, program postnatal program yeah that couch, and couch to five is good couch to five yeah, is couch good. to five is great yeah and then it's also listening you know we don't want to say to most no don't do this don't do that it's like listening to their bodies you know often everything will be fine if they go slowly and progressively but if then they start to bleed more or they start to um have heaviness or leaking then you have to regress you have to come back a little bit um and sometimes again, changing the way they breathe or the way they move, they have to retrain those functional movements again, because um, they may have lost, the, often the pelvic floor hasn't it, and their deep tummy muscles have lost that reflex um, contraction or recruitment that they had before. So, um, you know, we practice all the functional movements as well. You know, we practice the squat, the lunge, the push, the pull, and then, 
progressively add the load. And that way, by the time they get back to their um, activity of choice, whether that's Zumba or running, um, then um, they've done the preparatory work. And then we so have- So kind of like a really progressive graded yeah. program. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, getting feedback from them around any issues that they may have had as they were doing that. And then coming towards a few, just a few final questions. So we're now a year since, a year into COVID. And I know you and I kind of did, did a lot of uh, mutual supportive stuff together. And we, we ran that big evening for about, I think we had 300 pelvic health physios on, trying to, we, where we tried to support them with people like Myra Robson from Pelvic Roar, physio first were involved, our professional body were involved. POGP. Yeah. So we did that big event to support other physios kind of staying open and staying working. How has, what, what's a big, what's been a big change for you during COVID, Maria? Well, I was just thinking it's this time last year that we closed the clinic and I came to this office here in, in Chiswick and um, I transitioned to online really quickly. Uh, I think you did too, didn't you? And um, and we've continued to deliver Mummy MIT online, which is brilliant. Um, within um, the door is going over there, the noise. Um, so I think it's been really challenging. What we have done is, and within the network of Mummy MIT practitioners, they've really stepped up as well. It's been really hard for the mums um, because, again, isn't it? They haven't been able to exercise like they would have even when they were pregnant or post delivery. And um, so it's been more of a challenge to help mums. Um, in, in practice now that we're back open face-to-face -face since last August, we're definitely seeing more um, challenging postnatal conditions. You know, mums that haven't been able to access the services within the NHS or private, and they have a prolapse or they have urinary incontinence and they haven't been able to see anybody face-to-face. -face. So we've been able um, to provide that service and through the network because we've trained lots of um, physios they've been able to help lots of mums but it's difficult and you know now we're seeing the mums that caught COVID when they were pregnant and some of them have delivered early we have a few patients um, at the moment that are new to clinic and in clinic we're seeing um, the mums that have had their babies six to eight weeks ago that aren't being checked by anybody. They're just maybe having a quick telephone call and with the GPs because they haven't been able to access the service. So we've got an even bigger, we've got an even bigger role there to support those mums. Yeah. And then the mums that delivered like nine months ago that have been, they're not in any system. So um, trying to support them. We also did, I did classes online. So any mum that I saw online, then I did free Saturday classes just to keep an eye on everybody. So in one way, we've been able to develop new services so we can serve more women. And we have, um, as you know, myself and Martha and some of the team recorded some really good videos. Yeah, yeah. And so now and we then, have all those resources to- And to then send. Maria, this is probably not an easy question to answer, but who inspires you? You do, Gerard. <laughs> and you inspire me. And this is not pre Well, apart from me, who else inspires you? <laughs> Otherwise, I'll blush. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's lots of fantastic. I love learning from people. So, you know, again, over the years from a pelvic health world, you know, I... I haven't been over to Australia or New Zealand yet. I'd love to go that way, but you know, I was over. So would to, I. Yeah, Holly Herman and Rhonda Cotterinus and Stephanie and Elizabeth, all the American pelvic health physios have definitely inspired me back in those kind of, you know, 2008, 2010. And I can't wait to get to Boston to Holly. And um, Jenny Barlow helped me set up Mommy MOT, was just kind of by my side. And she was like, come on, you can do this, keep going. So, you know, you. I get inspired by people who give me good energy and who are positive. And I've got two really good friends, Davina and Simon in Portugal, who have a retreat space. They taught me how to meditate many years ago. Um, so I've been blessed by lots of different people um, that I've met. You meet new teachers, don't you? And then they bring you on a new path. Um, exactly. And, you know, I think years ago I've been inspired by, you know, I suppose the teachings of spirituality and Buddhism back in 2008, 2010. So I do love that world. And um, so not 
inspired by anybody in particular in that world because it's quite vast. Um, and then you are, you work very hard. You, you know, you support a lot of people. You support a lot of physiotherapists in your network and people look to you for guidance and support and mentorship. So that, that's a lot you do. And then you look after all your patients and your clinics and your, and your kids, your wonderful kids. Um, so to, what do you do, do kind of outside of work and outside, so outside of work, what do you do to try and switch off? Which is difficult at the minute during COVID. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I shouldn't forget the children. Sure, I shouldn't. They're all grown adults now. But yeah, they inspire me because they've all worked, they've all worked really, really hard. And I, I suppose my dad used to say to me, you know, anything is possible, you can do anything. And I've told them the same, and they are, and they've been fantastic. Um outside, I have to say, yeah, this last year I haven't done much other than work. And um, I've maybe done a few Pilates classes at home. And um, but when uh, before COVID, I love um, I love walking. I love getting to the sea. I love climbing mountains with people that are stronger and better than me. So they raise my game. I like sitting under trees, creating. I like traveling. And that's coming back. That's hopefully coming back with the vaccination program. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I love playing tennis. I love dancing. Um, and I think, yeah, I just love being around people who raise our game and, and give good energy um i'm i'm not i'm not so good then if people are a little bit kind of um negative by nature i'm just like... yeah i agree i agree and then last question last question uh what does the what does the future hold for the mummy mot because you're always doing things that, so obviously i don't want a detail i don't want your detailed private business plans but what, what do you see or what do you see ahead of us as postnatal physios what's what's what do you see ahead for us um well i just love mums anywhere really in the world to be able to access improved education and resources and you know screens online as well as um in clinic face to face with us um and yeah i just want to from a business point of view I'm, you know you know me i'm always kind of got this idea and that idea um yeah, it's just about the mums. It's just better screening, better access to resources. And as I said, you know, when we set up the Mummy MT, it was only really around that, just that six to eight week check and exercises. Whereas now we want services where the mums, if they have a, a prolapse, then they can be fitted a pessary. If they need a marina coil, they can be um, given, you know, contraception, uh, clinic advice so we're just the more joined up care exactly we're just looking at much better pathways so they're, they're all written down and there's a few people helping me at the moment and we should have those ready for june so that would make it easier for the mums so they're not having to go all over the place and they can find everything in the one space brilliant now maria i know where to find you because i can just ring you but where do people find you on where do people find the mummy so the mummy over tea can be found obviously on instagram uh davina does an amazing job on instagram yeah. so if you put the mummy mot hq into instagram and then online wh where can people find the mummy mot is it mummy mot dot something yes yeah, so it's mummy mot dot com um, excellent the website is and there's resources free resources there for the mums as well and then um they can find their local practitioner. And then centrally, um, they can, the clinics and everything are on there. There's the Instagram and um, yeah. Brilliant. And what I'm looking forward to Maria is very soon, hopefully getting down to London and meeting for a drink in London, because it seems like, it seems like, well, it's a long time since we've uh, actually, no, I popped the clinic in December for a, to, yeah. to do some work, but it seems a lot. Well, it's a, it's probably a year and a half since we had a social drink. I so know. I'm looking forward to meeting you in London. A big thanks to all the people who sent me questions. I re we really appreciate the moms getting involved. And a big thanks to everyone for taking the time to, li to listen to us. And uh, a really big thanks to Maria. And Maria, thank you for all you do both for me, the people I work with, all the patients you see in clinic, I'm sure, you know, they, they become like a, a physio family to, to, the clinic, to yeah. your clinic. Sure. And also to all the physios you support because, uh, you know, you do a lot for a lot of people and enjoy the rest of your day. And, as, as, and I think as we both look out, both in London and Birmingham, fingers crossed, I think spring has arrived. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Jared, for today. And I was just thinking there for the mums, 
I think one of my philosophies has always been in life that nothing is too complicated or complex to sort out. You just have to find the right people, keep asking, you know, for help and you'll get the right answers um, eventually. And we're all here to help you. And we've got a fantastic team between us all, don't we? Brilliant. Definitely. Maria, thank you very much. Okay, lovely. Thank you. Have a great day.